Hello children! Today we are out here in this little area right here covered with moist but dead leaf litter on the ground in search for a very specific and strange arachnid that you could find in these kinds of habitats, pseudoscorpions. Now, like you might be able to tell by the name, pseudoscorpions are not scorpions, though they share many common traits with them. So let's see if we could find any. Alright children, I got this white tray right here that I'm going to be using as a contrasting background. Now. All you have to do is take a handful of this leaf litter and spread it gently onto the tray and now just sift through it looking around there's an isopod these pseudoscorpions that we're looking for are extremely slow moving animals that could be very hard to find which is why I'm going to need this contrasting surface because any little movements will be sticking out against here Check out this tiny little centipede right here. I have no clue what species this is, and it's probably a very young individual of whatever species this is, but it's so cute. Just look at it running around. Ha! <coughs> yes! Check this out. That is a pseudoscorpion. More specifically, this is a pseudoscorpion of some species in the superfamily Garypoidea which seems to be one of the most common groups to come across while sifting leaf litter. I've noticed that these Garypoidea especially like living at the bases of trees, like pine trees and oak trees, where their small, brown, slow-moving bodies blend in with specks of dirt and pieces of decaying leaves. While you can clearly see it now against this white background, as it walks into some of the leaf litter, it becomes harder to notice, and if it hadn't been moving, I probably wouldn't have seen it at all. Alright children, check out just how tiny this little thing is. You can see it walking around. This is almost a full grown one. I've seen these Garypoidea get a little tiny bit bigger, but they do not get much bigger than this right here. That is an absolutely tiny arachnid, and it's so crazy how slow moving they are as well. Pseudoscorpions are predatory, and they wander around the leaf litter and soil and search for small invertebrates like beetles, isopods, and springtails to eat, while the majority of its body might look like a tick or a mite. There's one part of it that's a little hard to ignore, and is the reason why it's called a pseudoscorpion. Those enormous claws, which are highly modified pedipalps, much like those on regular scorpions. However, unlike scorpions whose claws only inflict mechanical damage and the envenomation of their prey comes from a stinger at the end of their abdomen, on pseudoscorpions, the claws themselves are mildly venomous, and they catch and inject their prey with venom simultaneously using their pedipalps. Alright children, even though these things are mildly venomous, I'm still going to pick one up just to show you guys how little bit of a problem these guys are, how absolutely docile these things are, and the fact that they are not even close to being after you. As you can see, this little pseudoscorpion right here is posing zero threat to me whatsoever. For multiple reasons. One, it's just walking around, exploring my hand, looking for springtails like it would on any other surface. Two, I'm not threatening it in any way. Plus, if I were threatening it, it would probably get defensive before even attempting to sting. Three, even on the off chance that this did sting me, its overall body size is so small, venom is so mild, and venom yield is so tiny that I probably wouldn't even notice a sting. And four, because of their extremely elusive nature and habit of living underground or in leaf litter, encounters with pseudoscorpions are quite rare. And an encounter where a pseudoscorpion is on you is even rarer. This was my first time ever holding a pseudoscorpion. And the fact that I didn't even feel it on me, not even a tickle, was kind of unexpected. Even though they're slow moving, they're still quick enough on their feet to where I don't feel a tickle. Like I was saying earlier, pseudoscorpions are much more likely to get defensive than they are to strike at a potential predator. And as you can see, I accidentally shook the tray a little bit, and instead of going crazy, the pseudoscorpion rolled up into a little ball, protecting its face with its big hard claws like a shield. If you thought those adult pseudoscorpions were tiny, check out this baby right here. Absolutely adorable tiny little baby pseudoscorpion it literally just looks like a speck of dust with claws it is just tiny 
This is definitely the smallest pseudoscorpion I've ever found. It's certainly the same species as the other ones that we've been seeing, but it's just so much smaller because it is a much younger individual. This is so cool. Besides being really young, this individual also appears to be teneral, which means it has just molted and its new exoskeleton hasn't fully hardened yet. You could tell because it is much paler in coloration than any of the other Garipodia that we have been finding so far, meaning that the exoskeleton hasn't hardened yet. Hope you enjoyed this pseudoscorpion finding adventure, and if you enjoyed this video, then make sure to check out this video right here where I find some really cool arachnids and other cool invertebrates underneath logs in South Carolina. Enjoy!